All right, folks, I want to talk to y'all about something before um, I talk about a verse and what I want to talk to you after that. And then I want to talk to y'all about how good God is through all of this. So I want to try to keep it short. And, you know, sometimes I just carry on when I'm not supposed to, just like that right there. Um, 2012, September, I got saved and baptized for the first time. And I started going to this church building and uh i like the preacher there he was you know one of those old school preachers the fire and brimstone is what they call him i guess because he preached more about the dangers of hell than he did the comforts of heaven like jesus did and uh you ain't gonna find that too much today they it's the feel good message in god's love that's that's all i've ever experienced after this church but um november 2012 our youngest son was born and, y'all, this is when the devil delivered his first uppercut in my life in a huge way that, you know, he tried to discourage me. And it worked for a little while, but glory to God, I didn't stay down. And that was only through him. Anyways, <clears throat> January rolls around and that same preacher that I was close to had passed away. One week later, mine and my wife's youngest son died from SIDS. And I tried going back to that church after that. And y'all, those, those people were so mean. They were pointing the fingers. And there was this rumor saying they were saying that uh, me and my wife did something to our child. Even though in the autopsy report, it said that he had Hirsch bronze um, and he died of SIDS, supposedly. And uh, Hirsch bronze is like an intestinal problem. Um, most people are born with it. And some, I don't know, I, I've heard some people get it later on in life, but uh, it just, it hurt that people would think the things that they do and then gossip about it. And, and I was like, you know what? I'm done with church buildings altogether. I don't ever want to go back to another one. This is how, you know, my whole life going in church buildings, this is how people are. You know, they don't go there to listen to the message it seemed like to me that they just wanted to gossip about other people and get in other people's business and things. And I noticed that my grandma was like this too, you know. She she just went to church just to gossip. And I, I saw that. And I was like, you know, this is, the, this is not for me. That's why it took so long for me to want to come to Christ because like, this is how people are. I don't want no part of it. And that's how people are today too, you know. I, I realized that because I was that way. Uh, so all that happened and I was discouraged for a long time not wanting to you know be around people I pushed all my friends away I didn't want nothing to do with nobody I just wanted to be around you know my wife and kids and uh, the only kind of comfort I found through that because I pushed everybody away I picked up this hobby of fishing and uh Y'all y'all wouldn't believe it, but my wife almost left me over that because I spent too much time fishing instead of with her. I should have been comforting her that whole time. And uh, I've learned a lot from my own mistakes. Glory to God. But um, <sighs> Okay, so now I think I want to talk about this here. Give me just a second. All right, y'all. So, even then, after my son died, I reached out, and I got no comfort from people. None whatsoever. Nobody cared. I can't say nobody, because, of course, me and my wife tried to be there for one another as much as we could um, before I picked up this fishing hobby that I was doing. I didn't go to no bars. I was just literally bass fishing. That, that's, that's what I did. But even my own, and that's why I say I pushed, pushed everybody away, because even my own friends that I had at the time, they weren't there for me. You know, you hear, um, I know y'all probably heard it before when, when y'all have suffered loss in your life. Um, I'm there if you need anything. If, if, if you need anything, just call. Well, when you need something, you call. 
and then uh, well, like a shoulder to cry on or whatever it may be. You get no answer. You get no call back. You get nothing. So I was just like, you know what? I don't need this either. I looked everywhere for comfort, but where I was supposed to in the Lord. I was a new believer. I didn't know how to take any of this. But I never blamed, I didn't blame God. You know, I, I didn't. I just didn't know how to take it. Of course, when you lose your child, you're not going to know how to take it. And I pray none of you ever have to experience that. I really do. But I didn't get no nothing. All I got in, in the church building was uh, gossip. People turning their noses up at me, you know. And it turned me off from all of it. And for a long time, I was on this, you know, and the only way I could put it is you slide down a razor blade and land an alcohol river, you know. Glory to God, I didn't get in on, on any drugs or I didn't go to alcohol. I didn't go to any of that. Like I said, I just, I, I don't know, I just started bass fishing. Like literally, would you see hanging on the wall? Those are plastic, by the way. Um, but I started doing that, and uh, and my wife started having problems after that because I, I I really did, you know, on on days that I went, I would stay gone all day and half the night, and then I'd come back, you know, and I just tried to fill that void, and uh, I didn't go in the right places. I made mistakes. You know, y'all, I, I don't come here and uh, relive my past for anybody to feel sorry for me or any of that. I just want to help somebody out there. And uh, I don't know why the good Lord puts this on my heart to relive this stuff, but he does. And I hope to God it helps somebody because I don't like reliving it. So, 2017, it was when we had that eclipse. August, I think August 21st, 2017. Something had come over me to snap out of that that downhill uh, walk. Uh, or tumble, I should say. Downhill tumble. It was like it was nonstop. Everything... All this traumatic stuff was repeating over and over and over in my head. And I knew I had PTSD. I just knew it. I didn't have to go to a doctor for a doctor to tell me. I couldn't be around babies. If I, if, like, uh, if, if one of my wife's friends came over and they had a baby, like, I couldn't take my eyes off of them. I was sitting there staring to make sure they were breathing. You know, I, I couldn't help it. And, uh, <clears throat> When that, whatever that was that came over me on that day, I felt the urge to pick up the Bible. And I did. And I started from the front and worked my way over. When I had uh, this surgery in 2018, and my heart stopped, and I made videos about this before, and I'm sorry, y'all, if I sound like a broken record here. But this peace that came over me, when my heart, right before my heart stopped, I can't explain to anybody. There's not a soul on this, on this earth I can explain, unless somebody else has experienced that same, that same peace right before their heart stopped, uh, if they're in Christ. Um, and it was at that when I had came back, I felt like you know, there was a reason. There was a, a big reason, and I didn't know what it was. I questioned for a while why did I come back? Why didn't I just stay in that peace? You know, because it was it was beautiful. I wanted to be there. You know. Um, a year later, I had to sit and watch my best friend. Really, at the time, it was my only friend, my dad. I had to sit and watch him die in the hospice. And it broke me because it was like, y'all please forgive me. I'm trying. It 
It was like a double whammy with that and my son. But God is good because he sent more of that peace on me at the time where I could uh, where I could bear it. Hold on, y'all. All right, I think I'm good now. So, after all that happened, I started getting more dreams. I was getting rapture dreams, like, so much. In 2019, I probably had 30 rapture dreams, and I kept seeing my dad in the clouds, you know? He's got me, Lord. I'm trying, y'all. I'm trying. But I'd found a, another church building. I can't, well, I can't say I found. My wife found another church building. She talked to a preacher. She took our kids to one of those uh, strong men things. I don't know if y'all have ever seen that before. They they send these uh, bodybuilders around, Christian bodybuilders, and they rip phone books in half and all that for kids. But uh, there was this preacher there, and he told my wife to come to the church. She told me, and I remembered the bad experiences I had with every church that I was ever in. And I was like, you know what? I really don't want to go. I really don't want to go. But I tried it. I tried it. And we were members and everything. We were there for months. Months and months and months. And then, you know, it, it felt okay for a little while. And then all of a sudden, I felt this, like, I can't even explain it to y'all. But every time I, after that I heard the preacher speak, I started noticing, where, where is the warning of hell? I mean, you're up here telling these people the, about God's love and everything, and they're out here laughing and giggling and talking and abusing. And every, they're, they're not listening to you. They're, I mean, there's... There's no fear of God in the church, in that building. There, there, There's none. And I, I started just, you know, I told my wife, I said, I don't want no part of this. I don't want to, I don't want to be here anymore. I, you know, I feel, I feel the Lord more in my own home reading scripture than I do in these buildings, you know, and I didn't, I didn't want to go back because people, they don't take God serious. I've been told by a few people that I'm a wuss now. Can you believe that? A wuss. So be it. I guess that's what I am. But I can tell you one thing. I am a true believer in Christ. A true. Only God knows the heart. Though men look at the outer appearance of other men and judge, God sees the inside. Just remember that. And yes, every time that I walked into a church building, they'd always look me up and down, and you know, I could tell that. But it's okay. Because like I said, only God knows the heart. I tried to tell people, I tried to tell people in that church building that Jesus was coming soon. I tried to tell them about the dreams that I'd had, about the rapture, about this country being invaded, all kinds of stuff. Nobody would listen. They didn't care. They looked at me like I was crazy and uh, like it was impossible to have dreams or something, you know. And I'd stopped going. And it was when I stopped going that they didn't care. They didn't care if they saw me there or not. I mean, they... now I have another friend trying to get me to go to 
to his church building that he goes to, and I'm like, no, no, I, I don't want to go back to a building. Um, anyways, so this this verse I want to talk about. I'm so sorry about all of that. James one twenty seven. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. When my dad died, I didn't have nobody. My mom and my wife. I can't say nobody. But I'm sure y'all get it. When my son died... I had my mom, my dad, and my wife. That was it. That was it. No friends to come comfort. No church building members. No no fellow believers. So where are you? I need you. Where are you? They weren't nobody was there. Nobody was there. And it was at that moment last year, last year, at that moment that I gave up looking for a friend. That God sent me a friend. He sent me multiple, not just one. How good is God, right? So whatever you're going through, y'all, I'm telling you, be patient. Be patient. And if you're a true believer... The good Lord will show up in a big way, right? All right, I had to take a breather. Y'all, I take this stuff serious. I pray that I'm counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Lord. I pray y'all pray that same thing. As if we're counted worthy to escape when that trumpet sounds. Nothing here is going to matter. Whether you're thinking of uh, a friend that's not saved or whatever the case may be. That peace that I felt when my heart stopped. If it was strong enough to not let me think about my wife or kids or anything. But focus on that peace. Because it was overwhelming. I couldn't, you know, it was, it was so strong. But if that peace is anything like standing before the Lord or more. I promise you, y'all. Y'all just going to focus on that. Nothing here is going to matter. Hang in there. Jesus is coming. I love every one of you and God bless. Jesus, Jesus is coming, coming soon. soon. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming soon. 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 Jesus is coming soon.